Today we'll look at how to use this cool vintage font in your Affinity designs. You can start with text like this and make it look like this. This font is called Beardsons. You can download a free version for personal use at thefont.com or you can get the paid commercial version at Creative Fabrica. I'll leave links in the description below. The style of this font is called Black Letter. And you can see if I click the Black Letter category on Creative Fabrica, I can scroll through and see other similar fonts. And you can see they all have this kind of similar style. They have these sharp pointed edges and they definitely have a harsher look to them. But let's go back to the font we were looking at. This is also a layered font. And that means to get the effects we want, it's actually gonna be several different types of fonts working together. So I'll download this and show you what I mean. I'll click download here and I'll save it to my computer. Now what I'll do is I'll unzip that file that I just downloaded. So let's extract it here. And here I have the files it gave me. You can see it gave us two file types. We have the OTF files and the TTF files. And there are four of each of them. And you can see their names, extras, inline, normal, shadow. I'll right click and I'll install them all at the same time. So I'll click install. And now they're installed on my computer. Now let's actually see what this font looks like. So I'll select my artistic text tool here and I'll type some text. Let's make it white and let's choose the font. So with my text selected, I'll go to my font drop down and let's do Beardson's normal first. So I'll click this and that's what it looks like. Let me alt and drag it. I'll make a copy. Now let's choose one of the other fonts. Let's choose inline. So this is what the inline one looks like. You can see it's like this inner shadow. Let's drag again. I'll do Beardson's shadow. So now it's an outer shadow here. And we have one more. And this one's going to be Beardson's extras. So we can see this one contains ornaments and frames and things like that. We can look more at that one later. So I'll delete that. So let's see how we can get these fonts working together. I'll select this inline one here. And let's select one of the colors in our sample image over here. Maybe we want that inline to be this kind of gold. And let's move it over our text here. And if we center them together, let's do this. We have a pretty cool effect here. Let's try it again for the shadow. We have our shadow here. Let's give it the gold color again. Actually, we want to make sure it's behind it, so I'll drag it below. Let's center all of them together. So I'll use these tools here and I'll center it. Now, when I centered them all together, the shadow one disappeared behind the normal one. So it seems like the shadow one should be off-centered a little bit. So I'll drag it out, maybe around there. So I think this actually looks pretty good. We have a stylized text, nice shadow and inline effect. And we combine the three different fonts to do that. Now this font has a few more surprises for us. If you look at the thumbnail, you can see some of the letters are different. For example, the R in the thumbnail doesn't match the R in our text. Same thing with the O and the N. Let's see if we can fix that. Let's just work with the normal layer for now. I'll get rid of the inline and shadow. We can add them back in later. So the first thing to check is to see if this is just a matter of uppercase versus lowercase. So I'll select the R, I'll delete it. Let me type lowercase R. So that didn't help, let me delete that. Let's type uppercase R, shift R. That also doesn't look like the R over here. Let's go back to lowercase R. Let's try it with the N, I'll delete this. That was our lowercase N, let me delete it again. Let's try capital N. It's close, but it still isn't the N that's in our image over here. So let's put that back. To find these characters, we need to use a tool called the Glyph Browser. A glyph is an image that represents a character in a font. And it's possible for a font to contain multiple glyphs for a single character. To view the Glyph Browser, I'll select Window, Text, and I'll choose Glyph Browser. And now I have this tool here. I can choose what font I want to view. You can see it shows Beardson's normal by default already because that's what we have selected. And now we can browse all the different glyphs in this font. So if I scroll up and down, you can see what's supported here. We have all these special characters. Let's see if we can find this R from the thumbnail. So I'll scroll down. And here it is down at the bottom. So with my text selected, I can put the cursor there. Let me delete that R. Now in my glyph browser, I'll double click this R. So let's double click that. And we have the new glyph for this R character here. Let's do the same thing for N. This looks like the N here. I'll delete the one in my text up here and I'll double click N. The O is also different and I see that's included there. Let's delete the O. I'll select the O here and I'll double click it. And I think this S is just a capital S. So let's delete that and put it in. Now I'll close the Glyph Browser. And now we see that the glyphs for these characters actually matches what's in the thumbnail. Now you notice we have this red line here that indicates a spelling error. Sometimes that happens when you select different glyphs. In that case, just select your text and then right click and select ignore spelling. Now let's get our words to curve like the text here. 
The easiest way to do that is to make a curve with the pen tool and then to put our text on it. So let me select the pen tool over here. I'll make the stroke green just so we can see it to start. And I'll click two lines. Let's make them curved. And I'll bend it like this. Now we can actually type text along this line very easily. I'll select the artistic text tool. And if I hover over my line here, you'll see the icon changes to a T with a curve. I can click and drag and start typing new text. Now that was not the font I wanted, so I'll just double click and highlight this. And I'll choose the Beardson's normal font again. Now we already went through this work over here of changing the glyphs. So I want to get it back onto this part here. Let me just select this. I'll copy it. Then here, I'll paste it. And you may have to align it a little bit. Let's get it like that. Now you can still drag these points to get the text shaped how you want. I could move this up and down if I wanted to. But I think there is pretty good. Now if some things don't look quite correct, you can change the shearing and kerning. So with my text selected, I'm going to open the character tab. So I'll select window, text, character. So I'd like to shift some of these characters a little bit more over to the right side. For example, this E is leaning a little bit too much to the left. With it selected, I can adjust the shearing over here. So I'll drag this, and I'll get it a little straighter like that. Maybe I'll do the same thing with the A. It's up to you how stylized you want to make it. You can do the same thing with the R. So that looks better. I'll do the O and the N. Again, we're just using the shearing option here. Maybe even this first B we can change a little bit. And we can also change things like the kerning, which is the space between two letters. So for example, maybe I want the R and the D to be a little closer together. I'll double click between them. And now we have this kerning option here. I can drag it and bring them a little bit closer together. And I want the D and the S to be a little closer together too. So I click between them and I'll drag this kerning option over to the left to bring it in a little bit more. Now I've cleaned up the direction of our text a little bit. Now, by the way, when you create new text, it might still have all these properties applied. So for example, if I select the artistic text tool, let me drag some text here. It might have all those settings that you don't want. You can see it's bent because it has all those shearing and kerning options. Even if I choose a different font, like Arial, if you want to totally reset the character settings, just click this button here, revert defaults. And now your text has all the stylings removed and you can start from scratch again. So you can make it bigger here, change the color, and it's easy to work with. Now that we have our text arranged how we want, we can go back and add the shadows and the inline effects. I'll press Control J to copy, and I'll call this one inline. Let's give it the gold color, and let's change the font. Inline. Let's copy normal again. Control J, move it below, call it shadow. I'll give it that bronze color. We'll zoom in, and I'll offset the shadow here. I'll give it the shadow font, and there we go. You can change the text again later, just remember that you have to edit each of these three layers here. Let's look at some of the ornaments that came with this font. Once again, we can go to the Glyph Browser, Window, Text, Glyph Browser. And I have the Beardson's Extra font selected here. If I scroll down, I can see all these different designs it gives me. But you can see there's all these cool shapes here. Now, sometimes I find the Glyph Browser a little hard to read. So what I do instead is I'll just type some text on my canvas. Let me select the artistic text here. I'll start typing. And then with that text selected, I can change the font. So I'll change the Beardson's extras. And if I zoom in, you can see all the different graphics it gives me. So these cool frames, these borders. I could even paste in the whole alphabet like this. Now I can select it and now I'll change it. And you can hit enter to see it all on one screen. And if you see something you like, you can copy it and then you can paste it. So I have this character here, it's very small. Let's convert to artistic text. I'll say layer, convert to art text. Let's make it big. Now you can leave it as text. You can also convert it to curves. So with this layer selected, I'll select layer, convert to curves. And you can actually edit it further if you want to. I could change the width of some of these parts here. So if I wanted to drag this area out more, I could do so. Pull that out like that maybe. So even though it's a font, it's still a vector and you can do modifications. So we could take this, change the color, put it behind our text, and we can adjust it as we like. And here's our final result. If you'd like to see more font videos, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.